What's up y'all? I'm Tom and this is Like a Math Class. In this video we're going to talk about finding the equation of a tangent line to a curve. So uh, we know that we use the uh, slope of a tangent line to find the slope of a curve at any point, but how do we find the equation of the tangent line as well? And how do we piece together all that information? Let's find out. We know that the derivative is the equation of the slope of a curve. So anytime we find the derivative of a function, we're finding the equation for the slope of a curve. I can't stress that enough. We're finding the equation for the slope of the curve. And the slope of the curve at any given point is the same as the slope of the tangent line at that point. We talked about this in some of our previous videos, so if you need to go back and check those out, they're linked in the description below. We've got all these different points on this curve, and we're gonna just kinda look and see what happens when we find the tangent line at some of these points. Well, let's label each of these. We'll call this point A, we'll call this one point B, here we've got point C, here we have point D, and finally, here we have point E. If we wanted to find the tangent at point A, this is typically what we think of when we're thinking of finding the tangent at a point uh, on a curve. Because what's happening is we kind of have this, this thing kind of coasting along here. It just kind of kisses the curve, so to speak, just touches it at one point. That's what makes it a tangent. And uh, we, we kind of see a line going along here. Um, some other common ones that we might see is actually point E. This is another one that's that's typically what we think of when we think of finding the uh, tangent of a curve. Now we have two other ones that we that we look for frequently and those are the horizontal tangents of the curve. The horizontal tangents will be where we've got a minimum or a max. The horizontal tangents tend to be where we have a maximum on our curve or where we have a minimum on our curve. This is a horizontal tangent and this is also a, another horizontal tangent down here. So let's just, let's bring this down here as well. So there we've got our two horizontal tangents. The blue lines are our horizontal tangents. There's nothing really specific about the orange or the green one at points A and at points E. Um, those are just tangent lines to that curve. Now point C, this is kind of a unique, uh, a unique point because at point C, there is a tangent that actually cuts through the curve. And if you can imagine what happens there, there's going to be a spot where we're, if we're going along, along the tangent line, notice all of these tangents are along the outside of the curve. And in order, if we were to continue following this around and we were taking these tangents as we were going around this curve, at some point, we need to hop over to the other side of this line because now we're on the outside here. As we're going around this way here, it, when, we're, when we're looking at a tangent over here, we're now on the inside of the curve, so we're actually gonna be creating a secant line. A secant line is where, it, uh, where a line cuts through the curve at two points. So here we've got secant lines, and, and in order for us to continue to have tangent lines, we have to kind of hop from the outside here to the outside out here and then continue around. And then the same thing would happen over here somewhere, whereas we're coming around out here, at some point we need to hop over and then we're gonna be continuing around for our tangent line. This point C, this thing is called the point of inflection. The point of inflection has kind of two things going on for it. First, it's where, like I was just saying, where, it, where the tangent line hops from the outside of the curve here to the outside of the curve here. The second, part, the second part of this is where this tangent line cuts through here. So we actually have a tangent line cutting through at one spot. And there's actually one more thing that happens with this as well. This is called, this point of inflection, inflection is where the curvature changes, which makes sense because again, if we're looking at this curve here, this is all kind of curving downwards, and now this here is gonna be curving upwards. And we'll be talking about that in future videos as well, the curvature of the curves or the concavity of the curves. As we continue along with this idea of the tangent lines, uh, we also know that the x value of the point of tangency, it can be substituted into both the original function and the, and the derivative. And why that's important is because 
uh, to find the, 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 the equation of the tangent line, we would need to know kind of where this is happening on the curve. So we might need to know the X and Y point for there or the X and Y point for here uh, for this point. But we also need to know the X value so we can drop it into our derivative function. So uh, knowing that this X value has multiple, multiple uses for not only for this curve, but for the tangent line will also help us kind of bring together all the information that we need as we try and build this. The last thing we're going to look at is what's called the point slope form. The point slope form is that, uh, that linear equation that your teachers always try and push off on you when you say, why can't we just use the slope intercept form? And you can if you wanted, but really if you think about what we're trying to do here, we're trying to find uh, the slope and we're trying to find it that slope at one specific point on the curve. So if we have a specific equation that that allows us to use a point and the slope, it actually makes sense for us to put that into the point slope form. Now we may rearrange it and create the, the slope intercept form, which is what we're used to doing, but having to do that over and over and over again for an infinite number of, uh, of equations might get kind of tedious. Whereas we could leave it in this form if we needed to, because we know we ultimately would be able to create the, the, uh, the equation of the line, whether it's in point slope form or slope intercept form. Um, so let's break down this point slope form. Uh, this here, let's start with the M. This is the slope. We know that's the slope of the curve, the slope of the curve, which is, which is the derivative of the of the function. Sometimes you'll see this written in your uh, textbooks as uh, using instead of m, you'll use like f prime of x because typically we call our function f of x. This x right here, this x, this is the x value on your curve. This is also the x value we use to calculate the slope. Because we want to find the equation of the tangent line, we also need a point for that tangent line. That point is shared on both the, uh, the function and the tangent line. So this y here, this y value is the y value from the function. And remember, the, this y and this x, those are just placeholders for the equation. Uh, anytime we have an equation, we've got a placeholder for our y and for our x. They can mean different things depending on what function we're working on, but uh, ultimately they're there so we can substitute in a value for x and find the corresponding y, or sub substitute a value of y in to find the corresponding x. Let's take a look at an example where we can kind of piece all of this together and we kind of map out where all of these things come into play. Um, because really, when we look at this here, this is also going to be this same x for right here, right? So we're going to find the derivative and we're going to substitute this x value into here. If we've got our original function, uh, if we have our function f of x is equal to some value of y, again, this x here is going to be shared by this x and this x. And this y, that we the, the output, we put the x into the function, the output will be this y. The work that we do for this is not that complicated. What's difficult with this, uh, with this particular type of work is keeping track of all the information and how does it all fit together. Let's look at an example where we can actually put this all into action. So here we want to find the equation of the tangent line at x equals negative 1 for the function g of x equals x cubed plus 2x squared minus 1. Now, I don't really know what this function looks like. All I know is that a cubic function looks roughly like this, right? It's going to be a positive function because this is a, 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 a positive leading coefficient, so it's going to be going in this direction. But I don't know exactly where all these different points are, where negative 1 is going to be on here. All I know is that it's going to look like this, and these things would continue on in either direction. 
So this is our function g of x. And yes, here I'm using g of x, when up here we talked about f of x, but we know that's just using different function notation. So uh, we found that we needed to have three things, right? If we go back up here, we needed to have the coordinate or the, the x and y value from the function, we needed to find the derivative of the function, and we needed to find the derivative with the x value put into the function. So let's list out those very things that we need to find again. We need to find the coordinate, the coordinate on g of x. We need to find the derivative of g of x. And we need to find uh, the slope at x equals negative 1. So let's see if we can find these three things, three easy steps in order to put this, uh, to find this equation for the tangent line. So let's begin by uh, finding the coordinate on g of x. So our, the, the number or the x value that we're looking for is x equals negative 1. So we said we want to drop this value into our original function. So we're going to take g of negative 1, and that's going to give us negative 1 cubed plus 2 times negative 1 squared minus 1. All right, so if, as we continue to calculate this, negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1 times 2 is positive 2 and minus 1 again. And so we're going to have a value of 0. So our coordinate on this curve, our coordinate on this curve is going to be uh, x is negative 1, y is 0. And if we continue with the same color coding that we used up above, we've got our x value being negative 1, our y value being 0. We'll call this part A. So here is part A. And actually, let's put this up here so we can say all of this is part A. Part B says find the derivative of g of x. B, the derivative says g prime of x is going to equal 3x squared plus 4x minus 0. So there we go. We found the derivative. Um, and now we need to find the derivative, or we need to find the slope at x equals negative 1. So again, here is our x equals negative 1. So we want to drop that into our derivative function. So we're going to have g prime of negative 1. And that's going to equal 3 times negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1. So negative 1 squared is positive 1 times 3. So we've got 3 minus 4. So our slope is going to be negative 1. This is our slope. This g prime of negative 1 is our slope at x equals negative 1. So it just so happens that our slope at negative 1 is equal to negative 1. That is not uh, a thing. This is just pure coincidence that the x value is negative 1 and the slope is also negative 1. So don't think that this, this is something that, uh, that always happens. Um, so we have now our, enough information to, to find our, our uh, equation of our tangent line. So if we drop our stuff back into our general equation, we're going to have y minus 0. Actually, let's do this. 0 equals m negative 1 times x minus a negative 1. And so again, this negative 1 is, is this negative 1 down here. This 0 is this 0 right here. And this negative 1 right here is this negative 1 right there. So we've got all of our different parts. And you know, you'd probably want to simplify a little bit further. You could just say, uh, okay, y minus 0 is y and negative 1x plus 1. So you could you could do this if you want. And now we're back to again saying, ah, oh, but you're back to the, the slope-intercept form. Um, yeah, we are back to the slope-intercept form. But 
as you work through more of these, if you had to find multiple equations, uh, you might want to leave it in point slope form, or maybe you're even just asked to put it into point slope form. You know, there could be multiple things that you, you might be asked to do. So you need to be kind of flexible with this. And so ultimately what happens is we have, uh, we have our function y minus y1 is equal to, and this is again, this is how you might see it in your, is in your textbook, um, where you have g prime of x times, times x minus x1, right? So here, this is, this is our slope, there's our slope, there's our x value, there's our y value. I can't stress that enough, that the x value can be used in both the slope or the, the derivative to find the slope, and it can be used in the function to find the y value for the function. They, they all work hand in hand. We've got one more example. Uh, find the equations of any horizontal tangents to the curve uh, for this function. This is the same exact function that we had before. So we're looking at a curve, again, that looks something like this. Again, I don't know exactly how it's going to look, but something like that for g of x. And we wanna find where are these things going to be horizontal. And we'll do that in the next video after you hit the like button. I'll see you over there.